Here's how you can kick Dropbox to the curb and replace it with iCloud Drive. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't done so already, I implore you to please take just a moment, subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. In this video, I am going to show you how you can replace Dropbox or other cloud services with iCloud Drive. And while iCloud Drive may not have every feature that Dropbox has, it could be a better option for you. So let's go ahead and dive into this of how you can replace Dropbox with iCloud Drive. Users often confuse what is iCloud versus iCloud Drive versus the iCloud Plus subscription plan. And honestly, it does get confusing. And even with iCloud storage, there's different ways that it works and interacts with your files, and it can be hard to nail down. By default, iCloud and iCloud Drive is available on all of your Apple devices, so your Mac, your iPads, and of course your iPhone. Many applications can store directly in iCloud Drive, making their files available across the board. Some files you can see, others are a little more hidden. Common ones are Just Press Record or Affinity Photo. There's a ton of different storage options, but they'll automatically save into iCloud Drive. So if I go ahead and record a audio file here on my Mac with Just Press Record, by default, it'll save it into iCloud Drive. When I open Just Press Record on my iPhone, those files will automatically be there. I can also navigate to that specific folder within Finder or the Files app to get access to them directly without the application. Beyond all of your Apple devices, you can also gain access to all of these files stored in iCloud Drive online at just iCloud.com and then going into the Files app there. So how do you access or save files just directly to iCloud Drive? Let's first look at how to do it on your iPhone or your iPad. So here is my iPhone, but everything I do here on the iPhone will also work on the iPad. I'm first gonna go ahead and open the Files app. From here, you'll see various locations because the Files app doesn't just work with iCloud Drive. It accesses the local storage on your phone as well as other cloud services. For me, you can see I have my Transmit FTP client for remote servers and Amazon Drive. Other services like Google Drive and Dropbox can also appear here. So you can access all of those from files. But we're looking at iCloud Drive, which is the top location here on my list. As you can see, I have a bunch of different folders going into it. I have things like my tech is there at the top. I have apps like Affinity Photo and Pages, Numbers, and many others that are stored here directly in iCloud Drive. So while those apps can access those folders, I can also open up those folders here from files or any of the other folders that I've created. This acts just like any other file system. So I can tap on the three icon in the corner, select anything, create a new folder, and scan the documents directly into iCloud Drive. So if we wanna create a new folder, let's say testing iCloud Drive. Perfect, it'll say waiting as it gets ready to upload that file to iCloud. I've gone ahead and added a photo, just so we have something in this folder to test, but it doesn't have to be a photo. It can be a document, a file, a spreadsheet, it can be a text document, it can be video files, audio files, anything that you would store in Dropbox, you can store here in iCloud Drive. And once I have the file, I can go ahead and share this file by itself. Just hold on to it and go down and tap on share. Then the normal share sheet will appear and I can scroll down and tap on share file in iCloud. Now I have a few different options. I can message the file, which would just be a link, email the file, or I can control the different share options. So I can control who has access to this file and what changes they can make. So anyone that I invite or only people I invite can access these files. Additionally, anyone can make changes or they can just view the files. And I can toggle on or off whether or not I want to invite users to add additional people to see the files. So I'm gonna do anyone with the link, which is a very common use case for Dropbox. People just share links out and they want people to access those files. Aside from sharing an individual file, we can also share entire folders. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna take that testing iCloud Drive folder and I'm gonna long hold on it once again. Now I'm gonna hit share. Then I'm gonna go down and hit share folder in iCloud. When I tap on that, it's letting me know I'm already sharing some files in there. I'm gonna hit share again, and it's gonna prepare that folder. And then I have multiple ways I can decide how to send it. 
but it's going to automatically create me a link. So anyone with the link, anyone can make changes. Once I made those changes, I can share it how I'd like, including just here in a message. It's really easy to do, then anyone with that link can add, edit, make changes to the files in that folder. Or I can limit it to only people that I specifically invite. Now, let's go ahead and look at how we can do a lot of this over on the Mac. So here I am over on my MacBook Pro. The first thing you need to do is open up the Finder app and you can scroll down on that left hand side and click on iCloud Drive. You'll notice we have testing iCloud Drive has already appeared here on my Mac that I created over on my iPhone. You'll notice in iCloud Drive folders that they have a little icon next to them sometimes. That means it needs to download from the cloud. So right now that folder has been created but it's stored up in iCloud and not locally on the machine. If I don't have internet access, I won't have access to those files, just like with a shared folder on Dropbox. So I can go ahead and click on that little download icon and download that, boom, just like that, to my Mac. Once you've downloaded something, you can also right click and hit remove download if you want to stop storing those files locally. This is really useful for large files that may be eating up a lot of your storage space and you don't need access to frequently. So, we can also do other things with it. So previously I showed you how you could share that file using the iPhone or the iPad. But in this case, I wanna stop doing that. So I'm gonna go down to share again, but I'm gonna hit manage shared folder. Now I wanna stop sharing this. So I can hit stop sharing. It'll give me an alert saying that it was being shared and people will not have access to it or it won't show up in their iCloud drive folders any longer. So I'm gonna hit okay, cause I wanna stop sharing it. Now that sharing icon has removed itself from the cover of the folder. If I would like to share it again, it works pretty much the same way as it does on iPhone. I go down to share, hit share folder. This is an iCloud drive folder. I can share through messages, uh, mail, copy the link or airdrop. Again, copy, drink, copy links, people invite, anything like that. I wanna change this just so I can get the link and hit anyone with the link, hit share. It's gonna upload it, make everything ready. Boom, good to go. You can right click, go down to share, and hit copy link at any time. Then I can paste that wherever I want, into a Slack channel, into an email, um, upload it online, anywhere like that, and you can share that folder just like you can with Dropbox. Finally, let's talk about pricing. iCloud Drive is part of Apple's iCloud Plus subscription plan, which encompasses more than just the storage. You also get access to custom email domains. You get access to hide my email as well as private relay. And you have support for HomeKit secure video camera recording and the smart features that go along with it. Or you can go with Apple One, which bundles your iCloud storage with things like Apple News, Apple Arcade, and Apple TV Plus. So depending on what you're looking for, it can be a lot cheaper just to pay for iCloud storage than for a separate Dropbox subscription. Now, if you're just looking at the iCloud Plus plans, you have three different options for 50 gigs, 200 gigs, or two terabytes. If you're going with an Apple One plan, you can bundle an additional two terabytes of storage on top of that for four terabytes of total space. For only 99 cents in the US, you get access to 50 gigs of storage. It goes up to 299 for 200 gigs or two terabytes for 10 bucks a month. If we go and look at Dropbox pricing, they're similar. You have two gigs for free. So two gigs of storage for documents and the like, absolutely free. There isn't much of a free tier when you come to iCloud. It is very small and can be easily consumed by your iPhone backups and the like. But if you go to the Plus plan, that is two terabytes for 10 bucks. So the same price as Apple's iCloud Drive, but you have all those additional iCloud features to go along with it. So those are the differences. That is how you can replace Dropbox with Apple's iCloud Drive across all of your devices. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comments or over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't signed up for an iCloud Drive subscription plan yet, there is a quick link down below in the description and the comments to make it easy for you to sign up. Otherwise, stay tuned. Got a whole lot more videos coming your way.